Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful time that you've given us. Thank you for the new year. Thank you, Lord, for being with us and guiding us and leading us. Thank you for this opportunity that we could come as a family to come and encourage, uh, discuss, and also, Lord, uh, help one another in understanding uh, the present truth message and our duty in these last days, uh, especially in this year. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to gather, uh, even though we're far apart from one another. We thank you, Lord, for this time. We ask you for your Holy Spirit. We ask you for your guidance. We ask you for the understanding of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, my presentation today uh, is one of Elder Chess' presentation on the 16th uh, of May in 2020. Uh, and the heading that was in this presentation was, uh, we do not understand equality. We do not understand equality. Uh, if, when we look uh, at the lines, uh, we will see at the, at the time that the presentation was done, it was just after November 9, 2019. November 9, 2019, so it, it's, it's obviously somewhere around here. Okay, that's where uh, at the moment of the presentation, that's where it was uh, presented uh, in, in a camp meeting. But as, as I watched uh, the presentation and, and, and reviewed it, I, I see that there are certain aspects or certain points that was brought out uh, on, on why we do not understand equality at that moment. I, I still see some kind of relevancy to our time and and then how we are still uh, some of us are still facing this, this problem of, of not really understanding what equality is, which is the present truth message of, of our time. Um, what, I, what I'm going to do today is just uh, go through uh, the history of uh, the disciples uh, and also uh, the line of Christ uh, as a priest, uh, just to explain uh, some of the things that the disciples went through or what they went through that that, that made them not understand uh, the message for that time. Uh, and, and we're going to the, and they're going to make application to our time and, and how uh, we see that it's similar to what has happened before uh, to the disciples and how it's, it is also applicable to us in this time. And, and there will be, uh, we're going to see the problems that they have, why they do not understand the message that they had, that Christ was trying to teach them, uh, and why they did not understand, even after the cross, uh, and also within the 40 days that Christ was with them and reteaching them. This is things that we're going to review as we, uh, as we go through our study today. Um, if, if, if I ask this question, um, what is the most important uh, line or what is the most important line for us uh, in this last, for the 144th us, for us, the priest in these last days? Um, I know that, that, that many of us will say uh, that it's, it's, it's the line of success. It's the line of success in, in Christ's line. Um, also, we need to also understand that in order to know what line uh, we are to refer to or what line is the most important to us, it will totally depend upon what subject we are, we are speaking about. Eh? Um, if we want, uh, want to know about uh, how the Sunday law will look like, the best line to look at, we cannot go to uh, AD 34 to, to tell us how the Sunday law will look like. Um, but um, the best line that we're going to go or the most important line for us, if you want to understand the subject of the Sunday law, is the Millerite lines. Uh, whereas for us to understand 
uh, what's going to happen within the movement within us or how how uh, the 144,000, the line of 144,000 is going to be a successful one, then we will refer to the subject uh, or, or the line of, of, of the Omega of ancient Israel. Eh? Uh, so it will depend on the subject that we are speaking on uh, to show us what lines or which line is the most important for us, which we will go back and try and review in order to understand how things will look like uh, in, 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 in these last days. Um, what we're going to focus most on today what is uh, the line of ancient Israel, uh, Omega of ancient Israel and the line of the disciples and, and what caused them not to understand the message of, 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 of their time, uh, which I personally believe that it's, it's significant for you and I also, because if we are not careful, um, we will also uh, be in the same same situation as the disciples. As 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 they go on, they were disappointed at the cross. They were disappointed uh, at the ascension and, uh, of Christ after the cross after forty days. Uh, they were also disappointed at that very moment. So if we are not careful, just just an overview of what we're going to learn, if we are not careful, if we, we do not um, come out of this, uh, as we're going to learn the problems that the disciples had, if we still have these problems within us or in, in our lives, then, then we are going to be disappointed uh, at the end of of, 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 of the dispensation that we are in now, especially as we are nearing the way mark of the Sunday law. Um, and, 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 and we know and we understand as Elder Pomid has put uh, in, uh, in, in the broadcast uh, how this year, year 2024 is, is, is a very uh, serious year, a uh, very important year also for us. As we see, there's 60 countries uh, around the world uh, that's going to have the elections today. Uh, we have the uh, Russian, the king of the South having the election. We have the king of the North, uh, United States having its election also this year. Uh, we understand about the synod, uh, the third synod, the, the sitting will be made this year where policies will be made uh, within the, the counterfeit, which is the papacy. So there's, there's so many important events uh, that's that's going to happen in 2024, and as Elder uh, Elder Terry just mentioned earlier, there uh, wars they're still going on as we know this first week of the year, and also the uh, the climate changes and the effects that it has on us, the floods and natural disasters that's happening. So the year has has begun with uh, a lot of events that's that's affecting. The, uh, the world, the global things. And, and, and just, it's, it's very important for you and I as, as members of this movement to understand uh, the message of the album, understand the message that, that we have. And, and it's so important that you and I uh, understand this. Um, just going back to the disciples uh, and, and the problems that they had uh, in, in trying to understand and then, and then and we're going to just review uh, what was the problems of the disciples. Uh, uh, and one of the problems that they were facing is that they uh, did not understand the nature of the kingdom of God uh, or the nature of the kingdom. Uh, if we look back uh, into the lines, uh, we could see, you know, we could see how... the disciples had that view of the kingdom. Why did they have that view of the kingdom? Uh, we, as we go back to ancient Israel, as we go back to ancient Israel, we will see um, Israel had started with Moses in Egypt. Then there was the history of the of Babylon captivity or the uh, captivity in Babylon, and then, and then Rome. Um, what the disciples went through was there was a deliverer that came in Egypt, uh, Moses, which delivered God's people out of uh, captivity um, and freed the, uh, God's people. 
And, and the second event was how Cyrus came and also delivered God's people. Then there was a deliverer, literal deliverer uh, in Babylon, which delivered God's people out of Babylon. And also, when we, they come down to Christ's time, what the disciples were expecting, and uh, not only the disciples, what the Pharisees, what the Jewish nation was expecting, what John the Baptist, the first angel messenger in that time, was also expecting was, and how they were interpreting the scriptures, where they were, they were just like Egypt, the first deliverance, uh, Babylon, the, the other deliverance, uh, of God's people out of captivity, out of uh, their from the hands of their enemies, they were also expecting uh, when they were under the captivity of Rome. They were also expecting a deliverer, a little deliverer, uh, to come and and free them from their enemies. Um, and, and we could see how the disciples, how John, how the Jews, nation, the Pharisees were expecting. A, a literal deliverer to come in. And, and the, one of the problems that they had was taking literal to literal uh, application of, of, of scriptures. And they were literally expecting a king to come. And they had a view, a warrior king to come and deliver them from, um, from this captivity, from these borders that they, they, that they were in. And these things were... You know, it, it, the thing that's interesting about this is that even, even people that God has selected or chosen uh, to, to, to deliver the message, they also um, had these views behind him. One good example was, as, as I said, was John the Baptist. Just prior, just before John the Baptist came, and, and where did John the Baptist get his view of, of how the kingdom looks like? Or what's the nature of the kingdom of God? How? Why did John the Baptist uh, expected a um, a warrior king, uh, a literal king, to come and take the throne and also overthrow uh, Rome? Uh, if we go to Luke chapter one, uh, if we can turn to Luke chapter one, we will see that. At the birth of Christ, the, uh, a prophecy was given to John the Baptist that um, and, 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 and we could see the words through his words and how he explains um, what was to be expected in that time. Uh, we could see how he uh, saw, foresaw, and he said that there, there, there was going to be a deliverer was going to come uh, to destroy the enemies. Yeah. If we go to Luke chapter 1, uh, can I get someone to read verse 67 to 79, please? This is John's uh, thing. And, and we could really understand uh, this is John's dad, uh, father, and, and, and how he's going to in, uh, inbuilt this, this thought in, in John and, and how John was influenced through the mentality of how the father was had uh, and, and how it was in building John and how John was also uh, expecting this same uh, same thing as the father has interpreted. So this is the vision that was, was given by Zechariah. Uh, if someone can read uh, anyone, uh, verse 67 down to verse 79, please. Luke chapter 1, verse 67 to 79. Eh? <clears throat> and his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be to God, the Lord God of Israel, for he has vis visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the of which he swore to our father Abraham, 
that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, Jael, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to forgive knowledge of us, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sin through the tender mercy of our, of our God, whereby the day spring from on high have visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. Thank you so much, Mo. So here we see the mindset, the, what, what, how uh, the prophecy that was given and, and how Zacharias had thought that it was going to be a, a literal king that's going to literally take up over uh, the enemies and destroy the enemies and and this was something that that was inbuilt into into john um and which john also as he went through his ministry he uh also taught and and had the same idea of the nature of the kingdom of god that it was going to be literally a king and it was going to uh he's going to literally overthrow uh the enemies and destroy the enemies. Um, so we could see the trend. Uh, and, 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 and why did Zacharias have that, that? That thought in his mind was, as I explained earlier, because in Egypt there was a, literally a deliverer that came, delivered God's people out of the enemy's hand in Egypt. Um, there was literally a, a man that came and, and, uh, and the, Moses came and, and delivered them. In Babylon there was Cyrus, that God brought in order to del literally deliver his people out of, uh, out of bondage. So as they look at that, uh, obviously they would take the scriptures, the prophecies in the Bible, and they would literally apply it and would literally expect uh, a king to come, a literal king, which will also set up a literal kingdom and, and, and literally destroy and overtake the throne. So this is something that, was there from uh, from from India and how they how they uh, interpreted how they interpreted uh, the scriptures things that affected them uh, the the pre what should I say the pre conceived ideas or interpretation that they had uh, which they took things literally. Uh, and we know and we understand that this is something that uh, that affects each and every one of us uh, in these last days, especially uh, how Adventism had the same problem, how they are literally uh, expecting a literal Sunday law to happen in these last days. It was literally in the olden days, uh, in, in the time of Miller, and, and now we are also uh, literally applying that and expecting a literal Sunday law uh, to happen, which we, as we see, we, we, we say, look at it in the in another way and how the Sunday law looks like, and how it really looks like. So John the Baptist was looking for his warrior king, Jesus. Uh, look, even, even Christ's mother uh, at Cana was, was, was expecting and waiting for Christ to reveal himself as a king. And, and, and all his disciples also had that same uh, same mindset uh, because of things that they were taught with, they were brought up with. This is an important uh, point that you and I need to understand uh, because as we're going to go through, we're going to see that most, most of what caused them the disappointment was their unwillingness to put aside these interpretations, these ideas, these, these views of things that they were taught with or brought up with, how they were not able, unwilling to lay aside all those things uh, that they have learned or they know of, the preconceived ideas, and how it continued affecting affected their decisions or how they uh, would understand the nature of the kingdom of God. These are some things that curtain or 
or block their eyes or still blinded them from understanding the, the, the true interpretation of the true application of the nature of the kingdom and how the nature of the kingdom of God looks like. And this, I, I personally believe, is something that most of us, uh, if, if we are not careful, you know, I like Greg's presentation last last two weeks ago where, where he was emphasizing on, on, on how to understand and how important it is to understand the scriptures uh, and, and interpret it in a way, uh, the right, right way. And, and using the methodology. And it's, it's very important. It's life and death, I could say, in, in understanding these things. And things that will uh, stop us from understanding this is one thing is, is taking things literal, literal, uh, literally and applying it literally. That's one of the problems that disciples had as we've seen how they've uh, interpreted and uh, delivered to be a literal king. And they took it literally and they were expecting a literal king to come in and also uh, the preconceived ideas and, and they were not willing to let lay aside and one very good example as we're going to see that it was the disciples how they falsely uh, falsely rare interpret uh, the, the scriptures it's very interesting very important uh, Jesus had to take his disciples uh, who were who were taught under the Pharisees and John, and and taught them that they were taught error. You know, in the time that what Christ was doing in his time, the three and a half years of ministry, what what he was trying to get them to understand was was um, from the first temple cleansing to the to the cross. What he was trying to get them to understand was that what. They were taught from through John and also what they heard from the Pharisees and the interpretation of, of the kingdom was 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 not right, was was error. And what Christ was trying to do was through parables, he was trying to teach them uh, how the kingdom of God was going to look like. And, and it's very interesting. Uh, and as I was sitting down and I was thinking about it, and you know, the the, the, the first man or the first parable that was mentioned or or mentioned by Christ. Okay. Uh, if you go to Matthew 13, we understand that the, the first parable that Christ mentioned, can anyone tell us what's the first parable that they they taught? The sower and the sorry about that. Can you repeat that again? The sower and the four soil. Okay, the sower and the four soil. Um, very interesting. That that was the first thing, and and what? Just just briefly, we don't have to go there. What what do you think was Christ trying to teach them? What was the soil? Uh, what, what what was the main uh, thing that Christ was trying to make them understand in this in this parable of the sower? So we understand that it's the seed, the sower sow seed, which is the messages. Uh, and these messages goes into different soils eh? or fell into different soils. So what are the soil, uh, soils? Just, just surface uh, explanation. And it's very interesting if we see this. <clears throat> I think the soil is the, the response. Thank you. To the, we to can the see that it, it, the responses, it's how people receive the messages. Yeah? Uh, yeah. Or I can put it in another way. If, if you read, read down and you go into how Christ began to explain what the parable was, one word you will see that he continued repeating is this. I will read verse, verse 19, eh? uh, verse 18 and 19. He puts it this way. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. 
So he's now explaining the parable of law. This is after the disciples asking, why do you speak in parables? Um, and this is a Bible verse that was emphasized by Greg last week, where, where he used verse 15. And how verse 15, I'll read verse 15, for these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest that any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and, and I should heal, heal them. So here we, you will see that the why Christ was trying to do, do to them was to make them understand the message of that time or the present truth message of that hour. And if you go down and Christ begin to explain about the sower, you will see that the thing that was the main thing that Christ was trying to teach with the parable of the sower, which I, which is one thing that I see, and there may be other application, uh, interpretation, or application of this, was one word that was repeatedly uh, emphasized by Christ was the word understand. For them to understand, he puts it this way: Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower, verse nineteen. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not. Then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed in the wayside. So if you're going to go down and further down, you continue to uh, talk about this understanding. So it's very important that you and I understand the messages. Because when we truly understand in using the right methodology, the, the present truth message, when we understand it, it's going to have an effect. Uh, in in our spiritual life, it's going to convert us, uh, and, 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 and there's going to be healing, as verse fifteen has mentioned. So, this understanding, the way Christ was teaching them, Christ was trying to explain to the disciples, uh, or trying to make the disciples understand the nature of the kingdom of His kingdom, and. Even though that disciples, it's interesting, even though those disciples was with Christ uh, day in, day out for three and a half years, when it came down to the triumphal entry, the foot washing, we could see with the disciples respond to Christ. Even though after three and a half years we're still with Christ and Christ was teaching them parable after parable, and was trying to teach them and make them unlearn the, all the errors that, that they were taught through John and also through the Pharisees, you know, of how the nature of the kingdom of God is. They, they still did not understand. Come the cross, they still did not understand the nature of the, the kingdom of God. They were disappointed. Okay? They were disappointed with them. If after Christ came to them, after 40 days, he was with them and he, you know, he descended. He, he was with them for 40 days. He was try, uh, trying to re he teach them again everything he was teaching them in the three and a half years. Okay. Three and a half years, he was with them from the first temple cleansing all the way down to the cross. He was trying to reteach them all the messages. That same message he was trying to reteach them here it is the same message that he was trying to uh, emphasize here. Uh, from the first temple cleansing to the to the cross, and that that even did not uh, they did not understand even after that forty days. Uh, they still held on to uh, that view of the kingdom that they that John taught that the that um, the Pharisees taught. They still held on to that. Because if we go to Acts chapter 1, verse 3, if, if someone can uh, turn their Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 3, please. <clears throat> we could see that this is after the 40 days. Christ uh, was about to ascend up to heaven after the 40 days. Okay. 
We'll read verse 3 down, down to verse uh, verse 6. Yeah? And it says, can someone read that? To whom also he showeth himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of heaven? Thank you so much. Will you restore the kingdom to Israel? Eh? So they asked Christ again. They were still expecting uh, a literal kingdom. You know, this is this is after this, this with the, this question that they posed to Christ. Saw that they still did not understand the nature of the kingdom of God, even though after Christ was with them forty days. Okay, this is something that's very important that you and I need to keep in mind. You know, if, even after the disciples, when, when the cross came, there was none of the disciples that understood the nature of the kingdom of God. None of them. None of the 12 understood them. Okay? You know, it's, it was very interesting how we took the line of, of, of the disciples and how the first one we mark is 4 BC, 27, which is at the baptism. And then we understand there was the 40 days in the wilderness experience. And then an angel came down, uh, fed Christ, and also the, the marriage at Cana, which we do then before the first, after that, then the first temple cleansing where Christ began his work. Then for three and a half years, um, we understand that Christ did his, his, his work. And then it ended at the cross. Which, when we applied in our time, that the four BC is in line with 89, 27 in line with 911, 2001, and the first temple cleansing here, which is the 2014, 2014. And it's very interesting how at the first temple cleansing, we could see a, a split uh, in, in John's disciples and also Christ's disciples. Uh, there was a split here in, in, two, uh, in, in, in the first temple cleansing. And when we look at 2014 and and then and, and we see the application of it and how in 2014, we also see a, a split in leadership uh, with, with part of the just and, 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 and which separated them from uh, from the movement. And, and it's really, if, if you just viewed one of Elder, Terra, Elder Cominder's presentation, Lately, how he was reviewing about the organization and how he said at that very moment that uh, in, in 2014, the most uh, influential, um, I think, the ministry that was running the movement at the very moment was the path of the chest. Okay? And, and how they split uh, from, from the movement. Okay? So we could see uh, how, how, how it paralleled uh, very well. With our time, and and there was a triumphal entry, okay, uh, triumphal entry which which we could uh, apply it and inline it with October twenty eighteen for us, uh, which is the midnight cry, okay, because the, in the triumphal entry there was a cry also made and thing. And one thing that we need to understand here is that at this triumphal entry, which is in line with October twenty second, which is the midnight cry. Uh, there was unity within the movement. Uh, remember, we need to keep in mind that the Judas was was still in uh, was in this uh, part of this group. Uh, there were Pharisees also there, and and also uh, other members that that, that was 
disciples that were following them. And after after the unity, even though they were together, even though they were united, yet certain or a few of them um, still held on to their view of how the kingdom looks like. And this really affected uh, affected them you know, in their the decisions down the line. Eh? Um, and the second temple cleansing happened after the triumphal entry where Christ uh, went in and, and cleansed the temple the second time. And Judas left, was tested, and he left at, at the foot washing, which is the symbol of organization if we apply it in our time. If, 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 we, if we look at this and we apply it before November 9, 2018, from the triumphal entry, the midnight cry to November 9, 2019, we could see that the second temple cleansing was in line or probably just before November 9, uh, 2019, we could we understand that the second temple currency, when we apply it in our time, is we apply to FFA and, and, and how FFA uh, was separated uh, from, 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 from the movement. Okay, so we could see how from the line of, uh, of the disciples, we could uh, see how it really parallels with, with our lines and, and what happens in our lines, um, especially this line of success. Yeah? Um, second temple cleansing uh, parallels with uh, how FFA uh, was separated from the movement and the food washing, which is the organization. And this time is when also Judas uh, left, the, left the movement also. Uh, he was within, within it. So we could understand this, and, it, and it, it's very important that you and I keep this in mind because the problem with Judas, okay, the problem with Judas is that he was not willing to put aside or let go of, of the idea or, or interpretation of how he wants the kingdom to look like. In matter of fact, he tried to force Christ to, to take up the throne, to, to be, be the king or the warrior king that he expected it. But then he was disappointed. As, as Christ went down and, and washed their feet, Judas realized, and it was confirmed to Judas, that Christ was not going to be the warrior king that, that he was expecting. Um, and, and he was disappointed in that, and, and he left. Uh, he left the movement. This is something very important just to keep in mind for, for most of us, for us, is um, most of the time we have these preconceived ideas, this, this interpretation, view of certain things, um, and we begin to uh, form images, you know, I like the uh, way we, we, other people the said, you know, we, we, as leaders and how they select, you know, uh, leaders, we, we tend to have a certain uh, mindset or image of how the leaders should look like. Uh, in principle, we, I can apply this here, where many times we, we have the view of how equality looks like, what what sexism or what how, how equality looks like in our minds, and then we tend to expect things uh, uh, or equality to to look like the way we think it should look like. Uh, this is very dangerous for you and I. Uh, or not have the right view if we do not by using the right methods. If we do not really understand what equality is and, and we have the wrong view in our minds or interpret how it should look like then we will make the wrong uh, choices we'll make the wrong decisions uh, just like Judas did just like uh, and we're going to be disappointed just like the disciples uh, were disappointed at, uh, when, when Christ did not uh, did not do or did not uh, be the king that they expected him to be able to take up the throne. So this is something that 
that we need to understand. First, they took things literal to literal, really. Secondly, we could see how they wrongly read the scriptures. They did not understand the scriptures due to uh, their own uh, beliefs, their own understanding. They were not willing to lay aside, lay aside uh, the interpretation and, and, and accept what Christ was trying to teach them. Uh, and this is something that, that blinded them from really seeing the nature of the kingdom of God. It's, it's interesting if we, if we see after that 40 days, there was a 10 day, 10 day period. And this 10 day period, as we know, is the upper room experience. Okay, it's the upper room experience. What happened in this upper room experience at the end of the upper room experience at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out, you know, it's very interesting that we need to understand this, that within these 10 days, the upper room experience, they were in one accord, they were praying, and they were also studying with understanding. Okay? There was also thing. And one thing that we need to keep in mind is that when the Holy Spirit was poured out at, at Pentecost, Ellen G. White says that they they under, then understood uh, the nature uh, of the kingdom of, Christ, of God and also the the object of the mission of Christ. Uh, so we could see these things that's that's happening. The prayer, okay. Um, there were unity. They put aside the differences uh, that they have against the fellow uh, family member within within the movement at that very moment, and also they studied, okay? They studied. Uh, personal, I could say, their personal time, their personal study in, 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 in also discussion in trying to understand uh, uh, whatever Christ was trying to teach them in, in the three and a half and the 40 days uh, period. Um, and also the Holy Spirit. Eh? Uh, the Holy Spirit through uh, which which I can say the Holy Spirit using the by using the methodology so that we can rightly uh, interpret uh, the scriptures or or Ellen G. White's writings. These are some things that it's very important that you and I need to keep in mind. And if we have to apply it in our time, this is something that you and I you and I need to also uh keep in mind especially you know many of times we 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 tend to just expect don't take time to study for ourselves uh and if we do not take time to study for ourselves our personal effort you know and review the messages remember this what they were studying was what they were taught Okay, in, in this time period that Christ was teaching them in three and a half years. So if we do not personally review the messages, um, messages that was taught to us by, by the, in the midnight crime message, the message of equality, if we do not review these messages, at the end, you and I will, will also be like the disciples. We will not be understood. We will not understand the scriptures. We will not understand the thing. And when we are, we will be tested. We will be disappointed, just like the uh, just like the disciples. Unfortunately, we understand that the disciples, um, all of them, uh, came to understand uh, the the message, the nature of the kingdom of God, and also the object, uh, the object of the mission of Christ and what Christ was was going to be. And and it's very important that you and I keep these things. Uh, keep these things in mind. It's, it's very important um, that we need to understand this. Uh, uh, principles, you know, if, if we look at just prior to the cross and how Christ was trying to teach disciples, another thing I saw that was very interesting, very uh, which is something that will also affect um, us from understanding the nature of the kingdom of heaven uh, is, 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 is our selfish, selfish motives. And sometimes uh, we tend to take the message, uh, 
uh, of equality or take a present truth message and we form our own image or interpretation of view of how it looks like and and and, and, and most of the time most of this interpretation has has self motives in it so that it can justify us in doing things uh which is not 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 really what the message is trying to you know um how we tend to take freedom uh, to be really free and not uh, and look at, at at freedom or look at equality uh, as a uh, I could say this as a left uh, or a liberal may look like look at it. Whereas we understand that we are radical feminists. We need to really critically look at uh, how. Um, equality looks like and interpret things as, as how a radical feminist looks like. Um, and that was something that I noticed, it was the problem with Judas, uh, who was not willing to put aside uh, preconceived ideas, uh, thoughts or interpretation. You know, sometimes we tend to think that the messages that we have and we begin to, sometimes we begin to compromise uh, on, on what you know what what the message and all of these things as i just mentioned all these things will contribute to us not really understand what equality is and when we do not really understand what equality is and when the great test comes in and it's way back of sunday law comes in we will fail uh we will fail our test um just to conclude for us today uh it's, it's very important. It's very important that we do not repeat uh, what the disciples, uh, what Judas did, what John did. Uh, maybe, you know, through God's love and mercy and forbearance towards us, he, he, he's, he's given us time. He's uh, helping us. to. Is, and I thank God that we've been able to review all these messages that uh, Elder Taz and Elder Pamin has been presenting and sharing with us, we review it and we could see how significant and how important it is uh, to understand that we may be able to understand uh, the present truth message in this last, in this last days. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully we will not repeat uh, what the disciples did because if, if not, you know, the thing with the disciples, even though they were following Christ, uh, they still deeply in deeply in their heart was instilled the the interpretation or how they what they expected the thing. They were still it was, it was so deep in their heart that it was very hard for them to remove it. Um, similar with you and I, you know, patriarchy is so so deeply instilled in our hearts that it takes time. It, it's very difficult for many of us to to, to get it out of us, uh, and then it's 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 similar with what the disciples are going through. And it's important that you and I need to really have a willingness uh, and determination to remove. Uh, the patriarchy that is deeply instilled in our hearts. Um, it's it's important for you and I to keep these things in mind. Um, you know, something that I also found out uh, in, in that presentation was I usually think, why do we put Gethsemane first uh, and 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 the wilderness after two thousand and nineteen? Uh, and the test was just mentioning how um, the Kaiser, this is ancient Israel, this is modern Israel. Uh, in, in our time, sorry about that, in, in Christ's time, the line of Christ, uh, Omega and Omega in our time period, and how wilderness was at the beginning, Christ, as we've seen it here, and also the Gethsemane, and we could see how uh, it came after, and as we apply it in our time, there's a chiasm. Gethsemane will come first, and then the wilderness 
uh, time period will come later. And that's where, where you and I will make this line uh, of Christ preparation comes in. Uh, the 30 year, year of preparation. And then at 27 AD, he went through the 40 days in wilderness. And then the, an angel came down to feed Christ, just like in the 40 days. And uh, as uh, an angel came down to the disciples and explained to them why I, he was still looking at this. And they began to try to make the disciples understand. The message came down. An angel came down. Here also an angel came down. Uh, the Holy Spirit. And then Pentecost, which is the formalization. And here it was at Cana was the formalization uh, of the message. And it's interesting. When we look at the first parable, was uh, parable of, of Christ was focused on uh, the understanding and how people need to have the right heart, uh, right motives uh, in receiving the messages of the present truth message. It's interesting at the last parable uh, of Christ, which is in Matthew 22, as I saw, was, was based on the marriage, uh, or, or I can say the, uh, the marriage was based on marriage. Uh, and, and the invitation that that, 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 that was given up to God's people. So it's very interesting that it's, it's focused in the parables were more focused on, on, on the marriages as, as, as I, I've written here. Moses' time period, the focus was Sabbath, Sabbath. And, and at the end, what Christ was trying to do was, was trying to emphasize on marriage, just like this. The first thing before he does his work was the marriage at Cana. Okay, so as we applied in our time, there was Sabbath from the Millerite, Ellen time, 1888 time period. There was the Sabbath was the main uh, emphasis in there. And just like Christ at Omega of ancient Israel was the focus was on marriage. So the 144,000 also has the application, has marriage as, as the focus. So there's a shift uh, in, in, in the interpretation or in the understanding. So with those uh, words, I hope that uh, uh, we can uh, really uh, realize and understand our responsibility and our duty in under trying to understand uh, equality. Because if we do not understand equality the way we are supposed to, what's going to happen is that we're going to be disappointed. What's going to happen is that when things does not happen according to the way we think or feel, uh, sometimes we tend to, you know, one thing that that, that was here that that, uh, that Thank you. Sorry about that. So, so it's very, uh, very important that you and I uh, keep these things in mind and and how we view and understand what equality and how it looks like. It's very important that you and I keep these things in mind because many times we tend to, uh, just like the disciples following, being part of the movement, uh, listening. You know, as Matthew 13 say, you have eyes, but you cannot see. You have ears, but you cannot hear. So, you know, many times, many of us are, are just like this. You know, we, we're in the movement. We're part of the movement. We, we listen to presentation. We watch presentations. Uh, and yet we still do not understand. Uh, and it's very important that you and I keep these things in mind. Uh, because if we do not understand, then there will be no uh, what equality and how equality looks like, then there will be no conversion. Okay, and 
if there's no conversion, no healing, then you and I will not only understand what the nature of the kingdom of heaven is, you and I will not, it will not be part of our lives, which is very important that you and I keep. So I hope and pray that this will, uh, the presentation will help us to self-examine ourselves as we study God's word, just like the disciples in the upper room experience. Uh, take our personal time in studying and trying to understand God's word. It's good to listen to others' presentation, but you and I need to take the time to, to review the messages ourselves and make it ours. Uh, because Elder Terry usually uh, emphasized us. And, you know, and most importantly, that it, it may, the message may do a wonderful work in our hearts and we may be converted that we may live by the messages that we have. Uh, with those words, may God continue to bless you. Uh, we'll, we'll close with a word of prayer and and if there's any question or contribution to our discussion, uh, our presentation today, then we'll do it after we close with the word. I'd like us to, if you're able to, to close with a word of prayer, uh, kneel with me if you're able to. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for your the word that, uh, that we discussed, the lines that you have, and how we see how it's applicable to us, how the line of Christ, the line of success in Omega of ancient Israel, the line of Christ, and how it's usually um, mostly telling us of our experience. If we want to uh, understand uh, how the movement will look like, how it's going to be successful, what's going to happen within the movement, Lord. There's a good uh, history that we are going to review, Lord, and you have given us, which is the history of Omega of ancient Israel. And as we've seen how uh, the disciples did not understand um, what, equality, what, what the message, the present truth of their hour, uh, is similar with us and, and many times we we tend to uh, fall in the same line or same attitude for the problems that the disciples have. Lord, we ask thee for your guidance. We ask thee for your help that you may help us to really understand uh, and view equality as a very good feminist uh, and help us uh, because uh, to understand what equality really looks like. We ask you, Lord, to please be with us for this day, be with the next presenter. Uh, may you continue to bless us with your, with the bread from above, above, Lord. And then may, be, may you help us to live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.